Welcome to the Harvest of God, brought to you by Laharoy Ministries, where you'll learn what the Bible says about the nations of the Middle East. The name Laharoy is taken from the well in Genesis, where Hagar received the name of her son Ishmael from an angel of the Lord. Ishmael means the Lord has heard your affliction. Laharoy Ministries brings hope and future found in Jesus Christ to Hagar's generation and neighboring nations. Hosts Sarin and Anna will now share in the series. Wells Among the Nations. Good evening, dear listeners. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us once more. Uh, this is a blessing for us, and I hope this will be a blessing to you also. Uh-huh. And uh, we're going to read a passage first from uh, Psalm 89, verse 15. Yes, in Psalms 89, verse 15, it is written, Blessed is the people who know the trumpet sound. As you know, the trumpets were used to herald things. In the biblical times, the priests blew the trumpet using specific sounds according to what they were heralding. The people or the army then understood what they were to do. Our today's program is about a ministry that heard the voice of the Lord years ago. The Lord told them, A time will come when I will tell you where to go. You will go to my people and I and will tell them about the seasons of sowing and harvest. You will tell the Christians around the world that the Lord has a great harvest. The Lord showed them the nations which are mentioned in the prophecies of the Bible. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord, the gospel shall be told to all the nations that live in the last days. This ministry is focused on a region where hundreds of millions live today, They are unfortunately a sad example of those, uh, as the Bible says, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who was the image of God, should shine on them. To bring the transforming power of the gospel to this region, we need self-sacrificial efforts, as the enemy exercises his power in this region in particular. Yes, and this unique region is called the Middle East. The stage of the historical and prophetic events of the Holy Scriptures. And we have a guest today, and our today's guest is the missions coordinator of La Highway Ministries, Eliza Murian. Good evening, Eliza. Hi, welcome. Good evening, Siren. Good evening, Anna. Thank you so much for inviting me today. I'm so blessed and thankful that I'm here, and I'm going to share the important vision that will be interesting to our listeners. Oh, we are very happy to have you too as our guest. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. It's our pleasure to have you. And what can you say about the Middle East uh, as a region of biblical significance? What I will say is that everything started in the Middle East. According to the world history in the Bible, the Middle East is the starting point of mankind the beginning and the end of the plans of God, and also the apogee of fulfillment of his plans and prophecies. Yes. The Christian civilization was born here, and after the birth of the early church, Christianity started to advance from this region. And as the time comes to this close, the situation becomes worse. The devil escalates the tension day after day. The population of this region has been ravaged and oppressed by the devil for centuries. And these people need the light and the true revival with supernatural power and urgency. Amen. Uh-huh. Wow. In all centuries, the Middle East was considered a conflict zone. Wars followed one after another, mm-hmm. creating an endless circle of nightmares. Today it is, um, we can't see, it's mm-hmm. growing and even worse. I remember all the news media having the Middle East on their daily l- list. Both radio and TV stations always reported horrible problems about that place. Yes. Wow. The roots of this antagonism are much deeper than it may seem. That, that is true, yeah. The national and religious confrontations seem endless too, especially the Arab-Israeli conflict. That seems like it's never going to have a solution. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing is that throughout history, many emphasis and warlords tried to solve this issue, 
but it turned unsuccessful. And probably the reason is their approach to this conflict was without understanding its real nature. Mm. However, the solution uh, to this ministry is the place where it started to develop centuries ago. This mystery started to develop through an Egyptian woman called Hegar, whom God promised that from her son Ishmael a nation will be born. Yes, and you called your ministry Lahai Roy. Please tell us why Lahai Roy. Lahai Roy is the well where the angel of the Lord gave a prophetic word to the maid of Abraham's wife about Ishmael, her son that was yet to be born, mm-hmm. saying that a great nation will, would come out of him. In spite of the fact that Ishmael was born as a result of man's plan, not God's, the Lord has heard Abraham's plea and Hagar's cry for him. Anyway, Hagar and Ishmael had to leave Abraham's house, as the promise belonged to Isaac. Here is the origin of the confrontation between Isaac and Ishmael that we just mentioned. Thank you uh, for sharing that. So what does Laharoi mean exactly? Laharoi means the well of the living God who sees me. The root and solution to the confrontation is here at this well. In Genesis 16 verses 13 and 14 it is written, Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are God who sees. For she said, Have I also here seen him who sees me? Therefore, the well was called Beer Lahai Roy. Observe, it is between Kadesh and Bred. In the Old Mm -hmm. Testament, a well had different meanings. However, in the New Testament, each Christian becomes a living well out of whom the living waters of the Holy Spirit proceed. Yes, correct. And this is the essence of the Great Commission, to go to all these nations and to give this living water to all who are thirsty. Yes. We have called our ministry Lahairoi, as our work is to open wells among these people. We fulfill the Great Commission to preach the good news to all the nations by preaching the gospel of salvation among these nations in unique ways. Um, that that's very important that we um, preach the gospel of salvation because yes. many fatherless nations they don't have that they mm-hmm. uh, they go they do their religious acts but they don't have salvation so it's very important to uh, preach the gospel of salvation that they they mm-hmm. also may be saved one day because yes. God says that every soul is very important to Him and. It's our responsibility to preach the gospel. And uh, could you please speak about your vision here in the United States and tell us when Lahai Roy Ministries was founded? Uh, here in the United States, Lahai Roy Ministry was founded in 2014 when the number of the refugees from the Middle East started to grow. Our vision is to open wells among the nations of the Middle East that are the descendants of Abraham who settled in Middle East and today are scattered all over the face of the earth. As disciples of Christ, we call upon our Christian brothers and sisters first to listen to the voice of the Lord, to reach out to lost of the gospel, and then to hear the cry of Hagar in Genesis 21 when she got lost and the wilderness in the wilderness of Beersheba, and to understand its meaning for our days. The Bible speaks about this in Genesis 21. Yes, let us read the verse 12 through 19. But God said to Abraham, Do not let it be displeasing in your sight, because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman, because he is your seed. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and water 
and put it on her shoulder. He gave it and the boy to Hagar and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba, and the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of what of about a bow shot. For she said to herself, Let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Amen. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. Wow. And she went and filled the skin mm -hmm. with water and gave the lad a drink. That is a very interesting passage mm -hmm. where... It talks about the well that we're talking about, the Lyra ministry well. Yes. And um, as I know, you have come with this vision from Armenia. Yes. First, I want to mention that years ago, when we lived in Armenia, we attended a church that sent books and sermons to different regions in the Middle East. By the way, Armenia is the first country to adopt Christianity in 301. It's as a state religion. Currently, this little state is a Christian country surrounded by major Islamic nations. In that church in Armenia, uh, they sent to translate Christian books into the Middle Eastern languages and distribute them in their neighboring mm -hmm. Islamic nations. That's wonderful. It was there that we saw how important it is to go to the fatherless nations mm. and to show them the Father the salvation, and the true Savior. Amen. That's great. And what kind of books are you talking about? We mostly use the sermons and books by American ministers. We notice that the books and teachings by American ministers are uh, urgently accepted and correctly understood in the Muslim countries. We could notice visible changes in the lives of people who received those materials from us. Then they absorbed the books and sermons in their own languages, their lifestyle, and their lives in general experienced, experienced a rapid transformation. We saw it ourselves and, of course, gave glory to God for it. Amazing. Yes. Amen. And we can always see that only God's, God's work, God's word, only transforms people. We can't do it. We yeah. can't go and say you know you have to change the your lifestyle because it's wrong we have to show them because according to the bible this is what the bible says and if you don't change your lifestyle this is what's going to happen yes. but of course if you accept god and accept jesus as your savior that transformation is going to start without you even knowing it yeah From and within. Um, that's amazing yeah so you have the same vision here in the United States as La Highway Ministries has a great work to do in this country also. Yes, here in uh, the United States, our vision has been greatly expanded. Currently, we reach, reach out to refugees from the Middle East with the good news of the gospel. We saw how difficult it was for the missionaries to get Christian literature to the countries of the Middle East. But here, we do not have this problem. They have come to Christian country themselves, and we Christians are commissioned by the Lord in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father mm -hmm. and in the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. 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 The doors to the Middle East are gradually closing before Christians who try to take gospel there. 
Their governments do everything they can to stop Christian missionaries from entering their country. They do gruesome things to even scare us. Many Christians have been killed by evil hands. But we know that our war is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the evil spirits. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, it's true. Thousands and millions of people come out of the region because of wars. And they go around the world. How can a Christian overlook this fact and not mm. see it as an effective door of opportunity to get the good news to these people? Today, they have come to us themselves. Today, Lahiro Ministries works on reaching out to them with the gospel here in the United States. Well, that's very important because sometimes we we think that how can I go and how can I um, reach people with the gospel? Yeah. But then we look around and we see that so many, many people, yeah, so many people have come here to the United States mm -hmm. and we can we can just reach out to them first and we can help them also because we need to preach the gospel and uh, people need to hear the gospel. And uh, nowadays, of course, we still have missionaries who go outside of the United States, but we also have people who come to the United States and we can just uh, preach the gospel to them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Eliza, how do you carry out this work here? We know it's not an easy task. Yes, before starting this work, one needs first to hear the voice of the Lord and to receive the leading of the Holy Spirit. It is important to receive a word from the Lord and be led by it, not just be led by humanistic ideas or show them kindness as a Christian in order to prove how good we Christians are, that we are good no matter what you are doing and we will always be your side to meet your needs. No, this attitude is not Christian. We Christians are very plainly that the devil has a special plan to destroy these nations. On the other hand, you see God's promise in the Bible, a good promise that speaks life to these nations, and the devil opposes this promise. In this situation, Christians must hear the voice of the Lord and be led by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Being mm -hmm. truly awake in the Spirit is a very important condition. First and foremost, we must pray. We must make the spiritual soil light and workable, so to speak, through prayers. Amen. So true. The hearts of these nations are the soil Jesus speaks about in Mark 4, in the parable of the sower. Prayer is the driving force that puts into motion the vision given by God. You can see in the Gospels how often Jesus withdrew to lonely places and mm -hmm. prayed. Yes. And afterwards, when he came, miracles followed him. Yes. And uh, we can see that when we pray, hard situations that we are facing, sometimes we pray, 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 and then um, it it's like the soil, so to say, becomes workable. We can uh, plant a seed there. When we pray, it becomes soft and we can work with the soil. And it makes, us, uh, it, makes it easier for us Christians to go and to reach out to people. Because if we, if we just went to uh, a person who is not a believer and told them, Do you know God? Do you believe in God? That person might reject you and say, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I don't need your religion. I don't need this. Mm -hmm. But when we pray for people who are not believers and we tell them that and we tell that God opens their heart, he he makes them workable. Mm -hmm. Then when we go and reach out to them, they might be more uh, easily approachable and they they would accept the word easily. And. James writes that the uh, fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Yes, indeed. First of all, we organize prayer groups that consist of compassionate people who have the heart of the Lord and are filled with His Spirit, who love God, love people, and love the nations with the love they have received from God, who are committed to the discipleship of the gospel who desire to see the nations changed 
country has conquered for the Lord Amen. and hearts of stone filled with the Holy Spirit who love to change laws and cancel demonic plans through prayer. These people have a very your spirit. They go until the end and return with spoils in the spirit. Amen. Obedience to Christ in prayer is very important to us. Uh, what do you prioritize in prayers? The priority in prayer is, it, um, is to have an armor of the Christian, as written in Ephesians 6, verses 14 through 18. Let me read it. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yes. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer Amen. and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this and with the preference and supplication for all the saints. Such prayers are answered. Such prayers bring great revival. Such prayers scatter the armies of the enemy. When we just started, we planned so much, but the Lord showed us that, first of all, we need to stop praying. Mm. The Lord spoke to our hearts and said, pray and I will show you the next steps. Wow, just the power of prayer. Every spiritual war is won through prayers. Prayer is the best guarantee of victory. Yes. When God's people pray, mighty things happen. So many, many people today are prayerless. Prayerlessness brings unhappiness, wrong thoughts, and you feel like a loser. What are you currently doing? Currently, we have a season of prayer. Of course, we started much work long ago, and we continue it. We perform translation and printing of books and dubbing of sermons into these languages. We put we, we, we will speak about it another time. Soon we will have TV programs, a magazine. These are good seeds, and we are sowers. This ministry requires very serious preparation so, so that this vision can be lasting and can be passed from generation to generation until the coming of our Lord. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, just to see that that's coming forward to just serving God. And God has a harvest in the Middle East as the cry of those seeking the Lord will not remain unanswered. These people might not know the reason of the bitterness and enmity that they live in or why they are fated to live with hearts of stone. They want to silence this cry of their hearts in their region, in their religion, or they seek the way out themselves. However, all the ways of their false religion end up in deadlocks and emptiness. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, a day comes when wandering in the desert will be over for the violent people, mm -hmm. and they will find the well of the living water. Only this well of the promise will quench their centuries of old thirst and heal their hearts of stone. Yes, today this challenge is for every Christian. Maybe you see yourself as a missionary, a financial supporter, or a prayer warrior. Whatever your talent or ability is, or if you are just willing to support, it is necessary. If the burning bush of the calling is a flame in your heart, we call upon you to take action. You will see that when you bless and pray for others, God blesses you mightily in return. Just have an open heart so God can use you. Yes. Eliza, we want to thank you for being thank here you. with us. Thank you for thank being you with us. For yes. inviting me. What a powerful word yes. today. And we truly hope that today's uh, program was a blessing for you. And never forget that through prayers, everything is possible. When God's people pray, as I said earlier, mighty things happen. Yeah, just and powerful. Amen. Yes. And uh, we want to thank you, our listeners, for being with us today. Um, you can visit our website and learn about us some more. And, and we you, welcome we, comments and suggestions yes. or your requests. Um, welcome. Yes. To. 
we want to hear everything that you have to say because uh, we want this to be a blessing for you. Thank you. We hope you were blessed with God's word regarding the Middle East on Wells Among the Nations by Laharoy Ministries. There's hope and eternal life for all of God's nations and people. Peace can only be achieved when the good news of the gospel is shared and his followers are equipped. Laharoy Ministries has been reaching the Middle East with biblical teachings to provide the word of God in native languages through Christian literature, sermons, and courses to help the people of the Middle East learn and stand firm. Please pray if God would have you support the efforts of Laharoy Ministries with a gift of any size. Your contribution will go directly to sharing the gospel through translated sermons and Christian literature. Be a well of living water to the Middle East. To give and to learn more about Laharoy Ministries, visit laharoyministries.org. That's L-A-H-A-I-R-O-I ministries.org.